to see that we are at the beginning of the conference. Uh, the crowd is streaming in, and um, we have a very wonderful setup inside. I'm sure you'll conquer. And um, we expect to have an energetic day, uh, one that is purposeful, with a message to the Jamaican people. Cupboards are excited, they're uh, energized. So the front, um, the request that we've been getting for assistance with mobilization um, is far beyond what I've seen before. So we expect that there's going to be a bump up there. We want changes. We are tired of what is going on. Teachers not getting proper paid. Police are getting proper bed, the hospital need to be fixed and all of that. So we just need to do what we have to do. They are of the feeling that it is our time and that time has come down for the People's National Party in terms of government. So um, it's critical. So and that we're sending a message, um, you know, that we're ready. We're sending a message as to the issues that we'll be taking on. And so, you know, I think it will be a good conference for Jamaica for them to see that the People's National Party has got themselves into a position um, to reclaim government and that they'll see that we're getting there not by default, but by deliberate purposeful action and that we have we're seized of the issues that are affecting the country and we have practical solutions. Peace out. 
when the country has a crime and violence problem and it is the responsibility of the police force to deal with it. That can't be right. That needs to be rebalanced. We will approach this in a different way. We have to deal with it without this state of emergency fixation. They have used this state of emergency and it is a failed strategy because it is not designed as a crime fighting measure. And they introduce a very dangerous situation because every Jamaican's basic rights and freedom are suspended when they are in a state of emergency. Many thousands of Jamaican youth have been held in detention under these states of emergency. After for long periods of time, very few were ever charged with any serious offence. Many lost their jobs. Many have been stigmatised as a result of the way this government has used states of emergency. We understand what it will take to achieve higher levels of inclusive and sustainable economic growth to drive national development. It must be built on principles of integrity, inclusion, equity and justice. We believe that the Jamaican people have the power to make this happen and it requires the leadership of the People's National Party to take Jamaica forward on this great mission of hope for our people. to build the unity and strength that has brought us to the point where we have reached today. I am confident that the Jamaican people will give us the chance to implement our plan for delivering a hope and a better life for the people of Jamaica as we continue to focus on our global objective and our economic purpose as a political party. I have no doubt that the PNP will go on to make the of Jamaica. because inflation alone is roughly 50% since they last did it. So that's a good part of the distance. So it's really just renormalizing where it was before. And I built in a little buffer because inflation continues. So yeah, I mean, you know, they can look at the numbers and decide on the phasing, but I think it's the right approach. In terms of the constitutional reform, you yes. mentioned that the Privy Council yeah. has removed the case that you want both. Yes, we do. Are we to understand that you will not support the reform if both are not twin. I don't really want to put that on the table at this time, but we really have little interest in proceeding with one and not the other because it's just to me, it doesn't make any sense at all, and it's a, it would be a wasted opportunity of giving our people access to justice. You know, this court, the Privy Council, came out of slavery, and as part of moving forward, we need to adapt the Caribbean Court of Justice, which Jamaica helped to design, helped to finance. Um, and we have a judge on the court there. It's an excellent court. It has been well received internationally for the quality of its judgments. And we're depriving our people of access to justice. So we have no interest in moving forward without it. And I, you know what that ultimately means for voting in parliament, I, I don't want to get into that today. I was just about to ask you, what does that mean for the process going on now? Um, will you withdraw your No, no, no. No, man, no, no. I mean, we, 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 paused our representatives on the committee for a very brief time 
after the government rammed through that constitutional amendment without any consultation, either with us in Parliament or indeed with the Constitutional Reform Committee, which was just another example of arrogant and bad governance by this government. And we paused our um, participation briefly on that. But once we decided to take that matter to court and file our um, action, which is now before the court, we have resumed our role on the committee. And um, we will continue to participate on it unless something else happens which causes us concern. Amen, amen, amen.